Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Astrology Victoria. Today with your host, Tatiana. And we have also our little co-host today, Neptune, who is here with me. Um, again, Dulcie will be coming very soon back to our weekly videos and other uh, instructional videos. And we have the astrology of this coming week. So beginning in April 18th, so that's Monday, until Sunday, April the 24th. So let's dive into this right away. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Okay, here we are. What's going on this week? Oh my gosh. I, this is a continuation indeed of... Um, the themes that have been developing throughout the past two weeks, I would say, there's a continuation. It's, it's, it's like a flow. And please, please share your comments, your what has happened to you this past weeks. Like, has there been a shift? I personally, oh my gosh, there has been huge shifts. That Jupiter-Neptune conjunction that we're going to, um keep talking about for like ever <laughs> and ever um for me at least as it started perfecting it's like there was a drop where i was shown literally at a timeline it's almost like a timeline choice point where i was able to experience something that was like an old idea and then a beautiful new idea that was being birthed then kind of went away and it was almost like spirit saying do you really like look like focus where do you want to focus your energy because you are being pushed there and when these things kind of fell away and i had to go okay whatever spirit wants then boof things come back i realign and it's like a resounding yes you know <laughs> And we'll talk about this with those squares to the nodes that we're having as well uh, throughout, the, you know, it started last week and they will perfect uh, next week. So this is this time of choice and we have so much support from the other side with this conjunction to Neptune, Jupiter, please share your stories. Do you have floods in your house? <laughs> Did you find like did you connect to spirit like oh my gosh you have a, a renewed sense of hope and, and and spiritual purpose uh are you more confused and hopeful at the same time what's your story what's what has happened in your life please share <laughs> um and um i've i've spoken extensively about this jupiter neptune conjunction so if you'd like to watch our my previous week video where the story kind of begins, it's more highlighted there. Um, uh, yeah, in a nutshell, is this expansion of consciousness, awareness, hope, purpose, something pushing us that's beyond, that's divine. Uh, that's what's been going on and uh, while, all the while having other very difficult things at the same time going on. So what part of you is already living that dream or already invoking that dream so that the dream that you had for yourself in this life develops over time? Where are you at? That's the question. And a little reminder for Virgos, Sagittarius, or Gemini people, make sure to stay very grounded because this moving into your dream could be challenging if, you, if you're not like really grounded in reality, grounded with your structures, because it could be like, we, tend, we could tend to be either scattered not sure changing our minds because you know gemini sagittarius axis is okay we're here in the mutable cross so there might be instability in our thoughts or maybe uh, some great ideals but not 
quite very orderly, maybe too much information, too much energy, uh, mental energy and not enough ground. With the Virgo, it could be a little bit different. The Virgo might be not knowing how to <laughs> integrate these very dreamy <laughs> ideals and, and maybe get duped, you know, maybe it's too good to be true. So make sure that everything you're doing at this time is aligned with your own being and moves you through it. I've been saying these, this for the past weeks, and I'll say it again, especially if you have not watched my previous videos, and this is the first time you're watching. Make sure to align with that. Okay, so we're having a Mercury sextile Venus, and we talked about this last week because the Venus sextile Uranus Mercury, um, it's like its own opportunity to to either be with like maybe new people come into your life and it's to take the opportunity of being daring to be different maybe socializing with different people maybe having genius ideas that come like oh my gosh eureka moments and um making changes also uh around your uh, th there could be changes around your um friendships as well maybe new people come in some people exit that's the nature of uranus and because uranus is still sick with uh, mercury again new ideas with the sextile to venus just the venus mercury alone which is perfecting on this day um april 18th um we we could be having uh a lot of grace coming to our lives <laughs> you know it's perfect for poetry writing for inspired ideas venus brings beauty brings pleasure bring it's also very diplomatic you know this is a good time to have conversations that are of the nature of diplomacy you know if you need to have a conversation that you have been putting off for a while and it's a difficult one for any reason Venus eases everything, it eases the mind, it, it softens. So it's a graceful time to have very diplomatic communication. So it's beautiful for learning things like um, nonviolent communication. There you go, you know, things like that are very much of the Venus um, Mercury. And Venus Mercury in both Venus and Mercury are in Venus rule, well, not rule signs. Venus is comfortable in Pisces in its exaltation and Venus rules Taurus. So there's a very, very, very much yin energy. So communication can become inspired with Uranus, inspired flashes of insight and the yin energy, the kindness and the softness and the grace to communicate might be very present as an opportunity since this is a sextile let's remember that sextiles you need to kind of grab them you they're they're there but they're not like in your face you kind of have to you know open the little sextile bag and see what's this oh i have something that i can actually use so these um this is a beautiful opportunity for for that kind of conversations or kinds of ideas, poetry, writing, any of the above um, would be very aspected, very well aspected with this. Um, also, maybe think about new ways of uh, dealing with your money. That could be also an inspiration that comes to you. Like you've been wanting to make a certain investment or a certain change in your money because Venus is connected to value and money. And uh, so there could be like this new idea that comes to you or new opportunity that presents itself. And you're like, oh, maybe I could do this. And so uh, that could also be an option and for something a little bit more sustainable because we're still thinking in the Taurus realm of things, which is more stable, uh, more fixed, uh, all the while having Venus in a mutable sign, very inspired moments as Venus comes closer to Neptune and Jupiter 
oh my gosh, then that's when we're going to have that divine feminine energy that I was talking about last week. Um, this is the invitation to invite, to be, and to embody whatever you <laughs> believe to be the divine feminine force in you or the yin, the receptive. Well, this is the time to soften and to sit back. Okay, and then the Venus sextile Uranus, as we already saw, it's the same little thing. If we just took Venus Uranus on its own, uh, could be like also new people, new friendships, new lovers, exciting things, new opportunities of, of you know, change of style again, uh, unconventional relationships. So maybe you're thinking of, you know, taking your relationship to the next level as well and talking about it, maybe in a way that you didn't think of, like, well, let's have separate uh, rooms or houses for a while, or I don't know, but, or have dates in a weird, <laughs> unconventional place or meet people that are thinking outside the box. These are all possibilities with uh, the Neptune, the Venus, Uranus, and with the Mercury. Again, the ideas are there. So um, as much as I like to separate the aspects, sometimes you, they're not really separate, which in this case, they really aren't. But as I give you these updates, I also want you to learn something about astrology. This is part of what I love to do is teaching things. So yeah. And now the, the, you know, this is the plat de resistance, our, this is our hard aspect of the moment. As much as we have these energies opening up into spirit, now we have also that sun square Pluto we talked about last week as well a little bit. And now it's perfecting. So April 16 to the 21st, this aspect is coming more tight and tight. By April 18th, mark the calendar. This is a time where a lot of the shadow can be exposed. How are we using power? You know, we talked last week also about the power of Pluto and what Pluto represents is the, it's the shadow part it's where we have attachments uh and it also wants us to die to things so we can detach from things and transform them more uranus is more the detacher but pluto is the transformer the transmuter so things that we have been attached to in the capricorn re capricorn realm of things which is which is um um you know authority, uh, control, uh, it's very tied to government as well because Pluto is a transpersonal planet. It's not just me in my life. Yes, it can represent what I, what I am transforming in this lifetime wherever you have Pluto. So when you have Pluto transits, things in that area of your life transform. But in the collective, this could be really exposing the last ugly things about the power structures and how governments, you know, top to bottom structures, because Capricorn has that idea that the Capricorn races from the water all the way up to the mountain. And it's the goal setter and the, the, the one that sees far in the distance, well, or just far up in the mountain and reaches those goals. And it will just climb and climb and climb. And, and Capricorn has that ability, you know, the Capricorn energy brings that, that sense of responsibility in, you know, in the best way possible is integrity, responsibility, authority, you know, that's the Capricorn feel of things. And with Pluto there, Pluto shows the ugly side of those Capricorn themes you know how are we using power and authority in our lives so those last degrees and squaring the sun now for a couple days this is the time where we're going to be shown where the power what's going on with with the governments uh, Pluto usually exposes the trash 
so we can discard it. The only way to do it is by seeing where it is. If you don't know where your trash is, how are you going to dispose of it? It will show it clearly. So we might be seeing a lot of exposure of things. And in your own lives, how are you dealing with the Capricorn themes in the area of life where this falls in your chart? And if you don't know very much about astrology and where your planets are you can always have a reading with me <laughs> and I can I'll be very happy to show all of that to you in your natal chart otherwise you can always find a, a chart on astro.com and find where you have Capricorn what house you have Capricorn in and seeing what area of life you're being asked to detach or refurbish or transform um, your structures of, 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 of power and uh, um, all the themes related to Capricorn. Yeah, and that can be, you know, uh, kind of be nasty because the Pluto, the Pluto sun in its best expression is the willingness to see the shadow and the ego trips you know where our ego is very strong and to actually dismantle that ego or those ego desires that are selfish or self-serving in its best expression we see it and we take responsibility for for that and in the worst case um in the worst case uh it can be expressed as domination and ego like huge make you know huge ego trips you know <laughs> and uh it, you know inflation of the ego of the i'm right i know uh, this is what it is and that's it and i know better <laughs> you know and then it could be oppressive tendencies as well or not so much oppression because with Pluto, it's more like power dynamics uh, that can arise. So let's take a look at that in ourselves and take stock and see if we can change that. The sun in Aries is still like, again, the sun in Aries can be very me, what I want, my path, my desires because Aries it's the initiator of things and in Aries we tend to be more focused around ourselves and, and what we want and that is totally fine because without having a clarity on what we want it's harder harder to include ourselves within a collective if we don't know ourselves and what we want so it, it serves a purpose but make sure that it's not just an ego desire you know and I'm very confident that this this energy here will help us see not only what our ego little ego wants but what our higher self wants in this lifetime and to be able to anchor it so it's no longer an ego trip those are my thoughts on this sun square pluto Whew. interesting week <laughs> and then we have um the exact conjunction of Mercury Uranus, which we already talked about, it's coming. Well, it's coming into its. Um, it's not really an exact conjunction. Uh, yeah, I mean, we talked maybe. What? I have the slides twice. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, and the Sun enters Taurus, April nineteenth. We have the ingress of Sun into Taurus. That will change the energy quite a bit. And I want to talk about this image of Taurus. For those who are new, we have a beautiful video, very um, detailed on the Taurus energy and what it represents. And Taurus is a yin sign. It's an earth sign and it's fixed, fixed energy. Taurus wants stability. Taurus wants to feel slow. Taurus wants to feel that things are grounded, solid, there to not move much. Was I too slow? <laughs> <laughs> to, 
changeability is not a, a, a staple of Taurus. And so we see this woman just being supported by this solid column in this beautiful, let's say, palace or abode or whatever with a tree surrounded by grass and nature and a bird and surrounded with food, abundance, money, pleasure, connected to, you know, her hand is touching the grass, almost like, oh, mother nature and our bodies are one. That's a very Torian expression is the body and the senses and mm, how everything can feel very luscious. So this energy is bringing us to the ground, the soil, you know, <laughs> maybe finding as the Taurus season will be very strong with the North Node in Taurus, Mercury transiting through Taurus, Uranus in Taurus, and now the Sun in Taurus. So now the Taurus energy is going to be very present. We have two yin signs very active, Taurus and Pisces. And again, like I said, Venus comfortable in Pisces and Venus ruling Taurus. So we're going to have a very Venusian time. And here, this is this woman is like the representative of Venus. So if you feel this energy, however you're going to embody this energy, this is what's being called. If you're not a very Venusian person yourself, you're very young, very fiery, well, this time is going to call or going to give you the opportunity to feel what being Venusian means, to learn something even for yourself. So this is a good time to start a garden, planting food, you know. Uh, this is a good time to be in the yin practices, which are more receptive. They're slower, they're gentler, they're kinder. So are you being kind and gentle to yourself or are you still pushing? Because pushing will not do it. Venus and the yin principle receives, sits back, relaxes, receives. So if you're still pushing, well, this energy is going to tell you, stop pushing. <laughs> and will kind of slow you down, like literally. So cooperate with the energy just slow down if you have not slowed down this is the time to slow down the Aries season was kind of not very prominent because maybe things were starting to happen but it was it was at the time where Mars was in conjunct with Saturn so maybe things that we wanted to move forward with were not really quite moving forward and at this time you know what take it easy it will happen all in divine timing so one step at a time one thing at a time. Uh, so as the sun ingresses Taurus, we might even want to be experiencing more of this like pleasurable things, uh, all the Venusian things. Well, that's that. And the Jupiter sextile Pluto. Well, this is an aspect, since we have Pluto in conjunction with Neptune, is an aspect that will definitely be amplifying so this energy will be talking to pluto very uh strongly between april 20th and may 18th so it's a whole month of this and this can be a very awesome time for empowering oneself you see this because pluto represents power but power is not a bad thing power is power it's the ability to do things. It's the ability to have raw energy. Pluto is root, raw, pure, raw energy, dynamite, you know, like the power of TNT, you know? So if you have clear visions and dreams, you're going to have access to that root chakra power. So make sure you root yourselves not up there, but down here and take that raw energy and bring it up bring up that energy of Pluto through your being, through your force, and up into the crown, and then back down. Great time to do deep, connected breath work. This energy is the 
it's the kundalini i would say it's the it's the raw energy and it can move mountains so this is the time to set your intentions very smartly where are you going to set that tnt charge what are you blasting off if you have a rocket and you're aiming it somewhere where are you aiming because this is jet fuel is rocket fuel you know it's big and if your rocket is aimed correctly how far are you gonna go this is that energy empowerment so this is a time to get your empowerment however again it's a sextile so you might have your rocket fuel here and you're like looking away and you're not like using your rocket fuel you're, you're still like come on we're just gonna push this rocket up hey you know you have this energy of pluto joining forces with jupiter in order to expand those dreams that we've been talking about expansion of consciousness and transformation this is the energy that will give you the fuel and the desire to transform within to make a real change we are moving into a new way of existing in the planet and this is why this astrology is so at the same time so magnificent so open so transpersonal with pluto and neptune this is extremely transpersonal this is beyond my little tiny little desires this is gaia this is it's just beyond so are you already on that bus or are you still on the on the waiting at the wrong bus stop hello it's that way we're moving into this new way of existing as a collective that that can function like this you know where we can actually find harmony balance and love for each other compassion co-creation tribe you know this is where we are moving sustainability self-sustaining models models that come from the heart we're starting in the heart if we're not already in that bus like what are you waiting for you're in the wrong bus stop <laughs> so who are you aligning with this could bring also people into like with this venus aspects you know that we have been seeing to to Mercury, you know, the whole week to Uranus, there could be new people or powerful people as well in your life coming in or the right tools, the right things, the right energy. I, I don't know. It's, it can show up in so many ways, but it's up to you to take that raw power and use it. So my recommendation, do deep breaths. <sighs> if you want to like enter in this vortex of breath and visualize your energy rooting down and anchoring into mother earth and ask for that raw energy if you have a very big project coming up just root yourself in that power and know you can do it and go for it the energy will be there Mercury squaring Saturn. So our Mercury is conjoined the North Node, a little bit past the North Node, but still in conjunction and squaring Saturn. We talked about the squares of the nodes to Saturn last week that are slowly, slowly, um, you know, the getting uh, separating as the nodes will keep traveling backwards. But with Mercury, we might be actually thinking already about where we need to move, how to create those new structures. We might even have new insights as Mercury passed um, Uranus, all those new insights that I told you last, last week to write, because you might have a bunch of ideas. And I told you, write them down, because then this week, you might actually have uh, the capacity to see clearly how to implement them and 
how to create those new structures that Saturn here in Aquarius is wanting us to create. With the moon approaching Saturn, the thing is like, we might feel maybe that there's still some dread. <laughs> there can feel there can be feelings of dread, but it's very short. It's, it's short lived. It's like a day of feeling like maybe you have to like pull yourself up to go into the direction that you want to go. Remember, we have a crossroad here between the nodes here or the past. So we're creating the future in that Taurus energy that's sustainable that's going to last in the long term because Saturn also ensures that we that the structures that we create last really 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 long so this is a crucial point in our lives so make sure to be pointing in the right direction with the right people in the right resonance otherwise it's not a problem then you will create something that eventually you, you will not be necessarily fully aligned with, and then you created it. So it created it's so much energy to then have to dismantle it and or just leave it and then move somewhere else. So my advice to you is take the time before making impulsive decisions. Because remember, when Mercury is with Uranus, so a little bit before in the week, there's there can be like too much ener mental energy, too much information and, and a little bit of, of a restlessness. Like I have all these ideas, you know? Uh, with this Taurus energy, it's like one thing at a time. Everything is falling into place. So don't think everything will fall into place. Think everything is falling into place. It's grounded energy, meaning we need to get our hands onto doing the stuff. And we're no longer too much into the thinking, we're into the doing. So uh, how are we going to do things and move forward with actual grounding of and manifesting in our reality that, that we dream of and that we really want? That's our Mercury. There, and with the North Node is also asking our collective consciousness moving towards this more this Taurus energy of kindness, groundedness, and sustainability. Make sure, you know, with Uranus creating havoc in our in the way we get our resources and our food, it's a good time to rethink how we get our resources and our food because. There could be a major disruptions in food chain and food supply chain and resources chain. So it's a good time to start thinking how to get more self-sustaining if you have access to that. And if you don't, well, start researching it or allying, getting in alliance with people. You know, here, Saturn in Aquarius, also people and our collective, uh, our tribes and uh, making solid alliances and committed alliances, Saturn. You know, once that's a little bit in place, we can start thinking about how to be more sustainable. I see all around me, and this is true because it's also true for me, lots of people wanting to create communities, buy land together in collectives and start farming. And this is not a joke. This is just so funny how all around me here where I live in British Columbia, in the island, the, in Vancouver Island, so many people are thinking about this. And is this just random? These people not necessarily know about astrology, but I'm telling you, this is what the astrology is asking and telling us to do. You know, get together with a tribe, start getting resourceful, uh, being self-sustaining, new, technolo new technologies in, in growing food, uh, maybe, or, or using technology in a responsible way, Saturn responsibility, and in Aquarius, responsible ways and responsible uh, structures to have your own food your own power your own everything so and live in community you know live together live 
or at least have a neighborhood network. If it's not people moving to a piece of land, it's maybe uh, having a solid neighborhood network with your neighbors, go and see what are they up to. Are you already starting to plan your little front yard garden or are you still locked in, in the ideas that daddy government is gonna take care of us? Because if you are locked in the idea, um, I would say that bus, it's, you know, it's another bus station and it's not going into the future or it's going into a different future that it's a more dystopian. And it's up to us to choose what future. Remember, astrology does not tell you what's going to happen. It will tell you just the climate and the ideas and the, the yeah, the, the things we have at our disposal to make reality happen. And yes, the dystopian future is still a possibility with Aquarius. Oh, yes. Entering in the age of Aquarius, dystopian future, very possible. Magnificent utopian future, very possible too. What boss are you on? Yeah, there you go. Sun sextile Mars. We're going to have uh, a lot of energy also at our disposal, you know, energy to go do stuff, Mars. Even though Mars is in Pisces, Mars might feel that it's a little bit, it might feel that it's a little bit uh, all over the place. So go with the flow because with Mars in Pisces, you might not necessarily have a very focused intention. There's just a lot of energy. But if you trust your dreams and you fight for what you believe is right and for your dreams in Pisces and for the collective and the collective good and collective consciousness and Mars gives you that energy to fight for it, then you might not feel like everything's kind of like all over the place, you know? You might feel that you're doing things here and then you need to change. You need to flow in a different direction a little bit, but there will be enough energy at your disposal, you know, to, uh, to ground those things that you want here with the sun and this energy coming from Mars. Uh, you might be able to ground things, have energy to ground them. So it's great resources. And that is the end of our week. So with all this being said, a lot is repeat, repeat from past weeks. But if I don't repeat it, and then sometimes you just need to listen to information once and again and again and again. So it gets into your, you know, your head. And um, I hope this is helpful. I hope you are actually moving forward in the direction of your dreams and trusting this energy. And uh, Yes, that's it. So please feel free to share, like, subscribe to this channel. If you want a reading, all the information is in the description below. Um, if you're confused, um, yeah, I can help you. Um, Deconfuse, unconfuse. <laughs> um, and we have some offerings with Astrology Victoria. So make sure to check out our Instagram, our Facebook, and our meetup groups. Um, that's how for now the platforms we're using because that's what exists right now <laughs> as we move into different platforms <laughs> but for now just just check that out and and join us there so you can be in contact with the astrological community of astrology victoria which is basically open to the whole world and beyond with the help of our wonderful helpers of the beyond okay i'm ranting here so <laughs> um blessings and see you next week